So people have been asking me to do a top 10 list of the year, stuff like that. And I've said many times that I'm not a huge fan of lists, like especially like ordered and, and best ofs and all that. Um, for me, this channel, you know, one of the main reasons I started this channel was because I watch a lot of shit. And when I say that, I mean for real. Like, I watch a lot of garbage. And I kind of weighed through a lot of shit to get to hidden gems. And with the internet now, hidden gems are a rarity. I mean, I remember when I was a kid and I went to the video store, like, that rack. I felt like Indiana Jones and I was searching for, you know, some lost gem. And, and every time I picked up a cover, it was something that like I felt me and maybe like 30 other people watched because this is, you know, before people were able to share and to look up online like all the best slashers of the 80s, best unknown gems of the 70s, this and that. Like you could look up, you can look up anything now. And while I am a fan of this because I consume a lot of media, and so I do need that facility to use. There is something special that has been lost in translation. Like ever since the introduction of the internet and these things, we've kind of lost that. And, you know, even horror fans have a hard time giving lower budget, unknown movies a watch. They like immediately write them off. Like, I'll go to Redbox and I will see just garbage titles, you know, and, and, and covers that look stupid and whatever. And a lot of the times I don't want to rent them, but sometimes I do. And sometimes they are as bad as I thought they were. And sometimes they end up being great and they have terrible covers. They have no promotion and no one will watch them, no matter how much I push for it. I remember... The Mummy versus Frankenstein from the guy who did All Hallows Eve. Like, I thought that was awesome back in the day. Like, this is like maybe two, three years ago. I watched that and I just thought that was great. And I pushed it and no one would watch it. And an American Ghost Story, that was released in Redbox too. And I randomly picked that up. But the cover looks like it was put together in Photoshop in four seconds. The title's stupid. The, you know, everything involved is. And I watched it and I loved that movie, you know? And so I was, as much as I tried to push, but this was before I had a channel. This is before I had, you know, subscribers and such. So I will take this time to share with you some of the hidden gems I found. Now I could go through the list of things that I found to be like the best of the years. And there's a bunch of titles in there that are super obvious stuff that you guys have already seen or were well aware of. You know, I wrote some of them down here like it obviously, or like The Devil's Candy, or Gerald's Game, The Void. I really enjoyed Cult of Chucky and Jigsaw, uh, Cure for Wellness, Autopsy of Jane Doe, Raw, stuff like that. Like, for me, if you're a horror fan at all, you've already heard of all of these, and you've already watched all of these. Um, maybe you haven't watched all of them, but you are very aware of them. They made a lot of people the list, so this is nothing new. So I will use this to talk about hidden gems and biggest surprises, movies that I just threw on randomly that people are aware of now, but I was just shocked. Like, I seriously thought they were going to be shit. So let's get into the first movie here. Um, and a lot of these movies are like 2016, 2015 type movies, but they weren't released to us or like Netflix or like whatever until 2017. Uh, actually, just off the top of my head right now, I just saw today they added Before I Wake to Netflix. It finally got released after all these years of the shit it went through to get released. Before I Wake, directed by the amazing Mike Flanagan, who did Hush and Oculus and, uh, you know, uh, Ouija Origin Evil and uh, Gerald's Game, which I just previously mentioned, and uh, Absinthia. I think that's everything he's done there. And they're all great. And Before I Wake isn't horror, and, and he wanted that film not to be marketed as horror because he thought people would be disappointed going into... It's a fantasy film. It deals with grief, and it deals... It's a fabulous movie, like Mike Flanagan. It's always great. So that's just not, I just saw it like you know an hour ago and I didn't have it written down here but that was finally released 
Uh, so I guess that's technically 2018, so I'm cheating a little bit. But uh, let's get to the first one. This one is on Netflix. It stars, it stars Dolph Lundgren, of all people, and it was directed by Mike Mendez, who did the awesome Convent movie. If you haven't seen that, it's a great movie. Uh, this movie is called Don't Kill It. It is currently on Netflix, as I said, and it is just a B-movie fucking gore-fest extravaganza. It has a unique, awesome plot. Loved the idea behind this film. Like, what the villain of this film is and, and, and what happens. I don't want to say anything, um, but I think the title kind of gives that away a little bit. I hope that this movie gets made into a series. I would love to see like a couple more of these. Dolph Lundgren to come back as his, you know, bounty hunter, monster killer character. Love it. Such a fun movie. If you're into like B movies with lots of fun kills, there is so many kills in this movie. Like a hundred, no shit. And most of them are on screen and most of them are awesome. This is a film that should be seen way more and be talked about tons more. I haven't heard anyone talking about it, so definitely check that out. Another film I picked up recently at Redbox and just randomly rented it. This is more sci-fi than horror, but horror elements are around here. I, rec I reviewed most of these, so if you want to go look up these titles and like full reviews, you can. Uh, but this is Radius. This would have made my top 10 of the year because... I adore low-budget sci-fis with creative, clever ideas, and this film delivered on all fronts for me. I loved this movie. This is currently at Redbox, and f if you are a fan of something it, like a sci-fi uh, mystery-type film, absolutely watch this. It's fucking great. Uh, next was Awaken the Shadow Man, another random Redbox rental. Cover art was terrible. The title was generic. It seemed like a, you know, a wannabe Slender Man type thing. And I was like, oh God, here we go. I threw it in. I reviewed it on here. I actually had the, the lead actor of the movie write me in the comments saying, thank you for watching the movie. I'm sure he's probably like, no one's watching this thing. I thought it was great. The atmosphere was great. It kind of um, reminded me a little bit of uh, Mike Flanagan's Absinthia. Like that kind of style, that kind of feel. Really cool movie. Should be talked about way more. Ultra low budget. People don't give these movies enough chances because they see the shitty cover art. Which is funny to me because back in the day, in the, in the 80s and, and in the 90s, during the VHS craze, the horror freaks like me, we ate up. The low-budget, unknown, shitty fucking VHS covers. Now, when I say shitty, I mean awesome. Those covers were awesome. They were not good by the standards of the time, but to us, like the April Fool's Day with the noose uh, hairnet thing and, and, you know, the happy birthday to me, the shish kebab through the mouth of the guy. Like, there's so many great covers. I could go through them. In fact, I might do a video on, like, my favorite VHS covers that got me all sparked up as a kid. Um, but anyway, moving on. Uh, next up is a movie that blew me away. Another one that probably would have made the top 10. It is such a weird, unique film. And it has an incredible backstory to the making of. If you ever check this movie out, absolutely look into the backstory. Because that's just as fascinating in this film. This movie, It is called The Evil Within. It is currently on Amazon Prime. And it, it has Michael Berryman in it. Um, and I just thought it was fabulous. Like the first 10 minutes feels like a perfect representation of what a nightmare actually feels like. Like internally, like what you experience when you're in a nightmare is the best one I've seen on screen. The guy who made this movie was like a meth addict with a bunch of money. And he worked on this movie for years, like cutting it and reshaping it. And it feels like it. It's chaotic. It's frantic. It's, it's messy. It's, but the acting from the lead guy, he's playing someone who, you know, has a mental disorder. And it is an incredible performance. Seriously, like Oscar shit to me personally. I thought he was 
incredible and this film is so unique it is a must see of 2017 no one is talking about it and it is a shame here's a movie that came out on netflix and i know everyone's talking about this but i have to mention it because it was shockingly awesome to me and when i threw this on i knew nothing about it at all except for that mick g the dude who did the charlie's angels movie directed this and i was just like Whatever, I'll check it out. The you know the chick looks hot. You know maybe it'll be a fun time, and it was awesome. And of course, I'm sure you know by now if you've seen it what the hell I'm talking about. But the babysitter, holy shit, was this movie a blast? I recently saw someone commenting in my thread or somebody else's thread about it, like this movie's this movie's stupid. I don't understand like what you guys are talking this and that. And I actually talked this person into watching it again and being like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is a juvenile film. Like, you have to go into it like a 15-year-old horny boy who loves watching over-the-top gags and kills and shit like that. And he went back and he watched it and he was like, you were right. This movie's fucking awesome. I, I was ta trying to take it seriously. And it's like, you cannot take this movie seriously. It is just like... A 15-year-old boy's wet dream, I think, is what I said in my review for it. And that is pretty much accurate. Like, if I saw this movie at, like, 14, 15 years old, I would have just fucking... Oh, my God. I would have... My mind would have exploded. The chick is hot as fuck. Bella Thorne's in it, and she's hot as well. But uh, the dialogue is really fun and witty and awesome. And, and the kills are ridiculous. And uh, everything in this movie just was fabulous. I loved it. The Babysitter, so much, such a great surprise. Another film that's not getting a bunch of attention, and that is currently on Netflix as well. I'm not a huge fan of vampire movies. I never have been. I've always said that that's horror for women. It's not a put down. Thanks for women. That That's not me being negative at all. I just think that vampires were invented for females. And so a lot of vampire movies to me are more aimed towards women. And that's fine. I'm glad that they have it. And I hope that they love them. But for me, usually, I'm kind of like, mm, I don't care about this. And it's not like I'm against romance. I love romantic films and whatnot. So sometimes they can work, like a Bram Stoker's Dracula with Gary Oldman. I thought that was a beautiful movie. Um, but there are lots. Uh, but anyway, this movie runs more in line with something like Martin, George A. Romero's Martin. If, you've seen, if you haven't seen that, that's a fantastic vampire movie. Uh, this is called The Transfiguration. It is on Netflix. Not enough people are talking about it. It's on, in par, on par with like something like Let the Right One In. It's that good to me. It's like an urban, realistic take on the vampire. Modern day, cool movie, great performances. Check it out. Uh, next up, another movie that's getting zero attention at all. And it is fan fucking tastic it stars bill nye and olivia cook and it is a jack the ripper style like old you know uh, 1800s foggy london murder mystery type film really good direction great sets great costumes everything feels authentic the acting is great the dialogue is solid the reveals everything works very well no idea why this wasn't talked about by anybody, but this movie is called The Lime House Gollum. Lime, like cutting a lime and putting it in guacamole. A Lime House Gollum. Why no one's talking about this movie? I have no idea because it's as good as anything like From Hell or any of those kinds of movies. So, yeah, just kind of got passed over. Shame. Another movie that is currently streaming on Netflix, Boys in the Trees. Awesome movie. No one's talking about it. Why? I have no idea. It is. It has so many great messages in it. It's a coming of age. It's got horror elements kind of laced throughout, but it's very like poetic and beautiful and, and so well done. The acting from all the kids involved is fantastic. Kind of reminds me of something that came out this year called Super Dark Times, which I'm sure everyone's heard of, and a lot of people are talking about that one. But if you really like Super Dark Times, it's nothing like that, but it does deal with kids. It deals with, you know, growing up and, and bad choices and, and, and regrets and love and all the things that kids go through, the confusions of the times. So 
check that out if you like that. Another movie that isn't getting enough attention is A Dark Song. This movie feels so original because it's it's about a a woman who hires a man to perform a ritual and the ritual takes place over the entire film. Like usually in one of these movies, the ritual is in like five minutes. It's like they do it and then something happens and this and that. And the ending of this movie worked for me. I can see why it wouldn't work for other people. But for me personally, I was so worried that they were going to cop out like so many of these movies do and they weren't going to show us anything and it was going to be ambiguous and it was going to be left open for interpretation and whatnot. And of course, there's interpretations for any film, obviously. That's not what I'm saying. But this movie really does give it to you whether you like it or not. And I know I've talked to people who are like, I didn't like it, it was too much, it was goofy, it seemed, and I was like, that's what I loved about it, that they did. They had the balls to actually do it. So, cool movie, very dark, pretty slow and foreboding, but it is worth your time if you like more unique dark tales. Anyway, moving on. Uh, another, uh, this one, Came, this is another one that no one's talking about as usual. I guess I should stop saying that, but it's true. It's like no one's talking about these fucking movies. And it is a very disgusting, vile, hilarious film. It is disgusting. Like, it is fucking gross. But the humor, this is, a, this is even more juvenile than The Babysitter. This is juvenile to the nth degree. And this movie is called Night of Something Strange. I did a review on it on here. That's all I will say. If you're into movies that are very, very, like almost like a slither or um, just lots of gooey, gory, grossness and people's talking about and doing really disgusting acts and whatnot uh, it is fucking funny as shit um oh yeah so moving on um another movie that blew me away this isn't exactly horror but it is thriller and i just feel like this is one of the greatest movies of this year and i cannot believe this movie isn't being raved about everywhere Man, I was raving about this movie when I saw it. The unbelievably great What Happened to Monday currently on Netflix. It is a Netflix original. It stars Numi Rapace? Numi Rapace? I heard somebody say Rapace recently, and I was like, is that how you say it? Oh, shit. I am in love with that woman. She is fucking fantastic. Like, straight up, I am in love with that woman. And she plays seven different people in this movie. And I thought she nailed all of them. Like she's interacting with them and they're going off of each other. The amount of acting that this film took for her is incredible. And the story is compelling. The action is great. The film looks incredible. This should have been a theater release. This movie was way better than a majority of theater release movies I saw this year. Man, I loved this fucking movie. Absolutely check that out if you like like sci-fi, uh, de- uh, well, not detective, but mystery action movies. The end has some great action in it. What a fantastic movie. And lastly, and of course I'm going to be missing some things off of here and I'll link of them later and be like, oh shit, I should have added this to the list. Um, like, you know, Secret Santa. That was one of my favorite fucking low-budget movies I saw the year. Now, technically that came out in 2016. It was December, but I have to mention it because if you haven't seen that and you're into Christmas slashers, now it is ultra low-budget. It's a $6,000 movie, and it is hilarious. Like, Mikey, uh, Mikey, Murren, Mikey McMurrin? Uh, I think that's... Yeah, McMurrin. Yeah, anyway. Uh, he is awesome and he made a fantastic film here and I really wish people were checking it out because what he did with his budget was fantastic. I thought that the movie was hilarious and witty and fun and unique and you know not original it's a slasher movie and how fucking original can you be but within those confines I thought he achieved something that felt 
at least unique enough to be considered original. Um, and lastly, I will talk about the monster project, the found footage monster movie that deals with the basic monsters like a vampire and a skinwalker, or, you know, werewolf, a uh, skin changer or something, uh, whatever. And, uh, a monster I, I can't remember what the other one is it's been a little while now but i remember that movie kicking ass and there's something that happens in that movie that i never ever ever saw i would see in a found footage film i'm not going to say what it is but i was like whoa i can't believe they're doing this it, it kind of screws with the rules that are set up in a found footage movie because that's supposed to be reality and this kind of breaks those rules and i'm glad that they did there's tons of action going on never does it let up it is never boring it is the coolest found footage movie of the year easily i've seen some okay ones but this one was the coolest if you like found footage movies and you are sitting there and you're always like there's nothing ever happening in these this is that movie to say yes there is there is a found footage movie where shit is going down all the time i'm not saying that no one other has ever done it there have been plenty but this is that one to hopefully shut you up and be like, oh, wow, found footage movies can have tons of shit happening and it can still be entertaining as fuck. Anyway, guys, this is my uh, longer than I expected uh, hidden gems and biggest surprises of the year. Um, I already kind of gave you an, uh, an idea of what like my favorite horror movies of the year is. Uh, some of these were them as well. Um, but there you go. If you've seen these, let me know which ones. If you end up watching any of these because of this, please let me know either in this or in the review itself for each one of these. I think I reviewed like every one of these on here. Uh, but anyway, guys, thank you for watching as always. And I look forward to 2018 and all of the awesome movies that will come.